Hi, Pastor Dave Davenport here, just wanting to weigh in on some of the things I'm seeing in the world around us, especially in America. We're having problems making good decisions as Christians today. And as I ponder it, it breaks my heart because I've been privileged to live in a country that is one that has been blessed above all countries uh, that have ever been in existence. And we did it because we honored the God of heaven. We put him first. We tried to plunder the scriptures to figure out how to put together our constitution, to put together our, uh, our, our, our whole nation, really. We learned as we went. Mistakes were made. Things can be tough sometimes. We don't uh, have any uh, ability to claim that we were perfect, but we do have the ability to claim that in the moorings of our country, uh, we had a heart that at least had its, uh, its inner eye looking toward the heavens, God-fearing people at the very least were at the reins and they were trying to make good decisions. And uh, so I wanted to weigh in on this upcoming election uh, because I think this is going to be something people are going to be Googling and YouTubing and trying to figure out where they need to go uh, and how they need to approach it. There are people I I that are out there who are saying they would never vote for Donald Trump. There are people uh, out there who have no idea how uh, corrupt the Clintons and especially Hillary Clinton is and it just boggles the mind. It definitely, distray, uh, it definitely displays a, a real lack of uh, engagement. There was uh, one group did a survey on the streets and people couldn't even recognize the, the, the vice president uh, in a picture uh, uh, test. Uh, and the, the candidates themselves, they, they're just being portrayed in those sound bites. So let me just speak to that for a moment. And I want to start with a few passages of Scripture to give us an idea of what it is we really are looking at here. As a country, we have been blessed. And now that we have abandoned God on so many levels, because we've become enfolded in on ourselves, we've become egocentric beyond measure, we've become more and more kings, uh, without any regard to the Word of God or the pastors and teachers of the scriptures and, and we don't really look for counsel in the right places. If you want to find a reason, uh, if you want to find, if you want to find some way to justify a behavior, you can find a 10 or 12, 15 or 100, I don't know, uh, authorities and doctors and so forth that'll tell you you can do what you want. But the scripture has this to say, and it was written by Isaiah in chapter 1, and I think it comes to bear, though it was written of Israel proper, I think it, 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 it is, needs to be brought to bear on our situation. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 1 verse 5 and following, Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And I would go on and read, and I would encourage you to do so. But if it's not a characterization of America, I don't know what is. We've seen our, our Twin Towers go down. We've seen our economy be assaulted. We've seen our streets become uh, filled with rage and riots and uprising. We've seen our police being vilified. We've seen our ministers and our, uh, our pastors and teachers that are truly trying to uphold the truth uh, be put in, uh, be, being portrayed, if you will, as if they are to be suspected, uh, as if they are charlatan or whatever. And the devil is certainly afoot today. Uh, our economy, our, our borders, all of the things that we're seeing. Uh, our hope is not in man, it's in God. Uh, back in a uh, few months ago when we had our primaries in Ohio, I supported Ted Cruz and I did so for all the right reasons. And I don't want to go into all that I said there, but I have other postings that talked about Trump and Cruz. And there were issues. I have serious issues with the character of Donald Trump. However, we need to recognize that to take our position as being a never Trump kind of a position would be, the, uh, would be the height of foolishness. You and I have not got the right to opt out of the process. If we call ourselves God's children, we need to listen to God's word. 
And uh, I recognize all of the nonsense uh, of what's going on with Donald Trump. Uh, he comes across as a bully and he has this uh, one value that is paramount to all others. And it's the, uh, the value of counterpunching. He hits people back, he hits them hard, he, he bullies them back in some way. It's troubling. I get that. I get that. But we only have two choices as I see it. If we go for a third party, we're making a choice for the one we certainly don't want to be there. If we opt out, we're making a choice for Clinton. If we uh, do nothing, we're making a choice for Clinton. Uh, it's just create, it, it creates its own problem. And of course, the devil would love to have it. So, so for me, I want to give you a couple passages so you can um, kind of deal with your conscience on this. The Bible is very clear that we are in a fallen world. The Bible is very clear that what you and I live in is a disaster area, if you will. It's ground zero for the fall of man. And though we propped it up, built and corrected and tweaked and so forth and overcome many of the uh, elemental realities of the curse, that does not negate the fact that you and I still are responsible to engage in this world and try to be uh, facilitators of God's rescue mission. He is trying to win people uh, to himself. He's trying to call a bride out at this present time for his son. And the Bible tells us that we don't have the right to look at our world with such a, a super uh, holier-than-thou piety that, that we, we dismiss and, and disrespect the systems that are in place. God instituted the family, and we're all about that. The, the rulings of the Supreme Court have been ridiculous. They've been, uh, they've been an, an affront to God. It's part of why we have these wounds and sores. But also he instituted human government, not because it would be perfect, but because it was necessary in order to keep men in check to some degree. If I were to look at uh, uh, Donald Trump in this stage of the game, I have, to con I have to concede that he is the best candidate. If we would say we went to Egypt for help instead of looking to God for help in the primaries and we chose a casino guy over a Christian guy, I, I, you know, that's true. However, God many times takes his people and puts them in places that are uncomfortable to bring out the best graces in them. He sent Joseph into Egyptian captivity uh, that he might eventually be able to preserve the people of God. Uh, we, th we think of Daniel at the right hand of Nebuchadnezzar who was a wicked, wicked king. He, he is the one I'm looking to now as hopefully emblematic of Donald Trump. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the glory of all the kingdoms. <laughs> he, was, he was the king of the most glorious kingdom that ever was. It was known for the hanging gardens. It was a kingdom that was known as the golden head in, in, his, in his dream. Daniel said, you are the golden head. Why? Because you are opulent and so forth. And certainly Donald Trump has that going on. Everything he, his heart could want or desire he's had and has. So I want to suggest to you that you consider him uh, in the light of what Daniel had to consider Nebuchadnezzar because in, in, at length, uh, Nebuchadnezzar got saved. And uh, that's awesome. And I would love to hope that that is what would happen with Donald Trump. Let me give you a couple of passages that are pertinent here. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 2 says this, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard to the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever he pleaseth. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whosoever keepeth this commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, with supernatural endowment of wisdom, says that you and I, in the real time in which we live, are supposed to keep the king's commandment, but that in regard to the commandment of God or the oath of God. What he's saying is, the king may think, may say and decree things that we find odious and difficult, and we need to take that to heart and keep it, protect it, prop it up, try to do the best we can with it as far as we can go without breaking our vows to God. Okay, the oath to God. When man's laws conflict deliberately with God's laws, we need to honor God's laws. The, uh, those who were in the book of Acts made it very clear. Should we obey God or man? You judge. We have to obey God. 
But God in his word tells us we need to keep the king's commandment. We need to go with what's put before us. If we're in Rome, we need to go with what Rome has told us to do to the degree that we can go. If a man in Rome was compelled to go a mile, we were told by our Lord Jesus to go that mile and go a second mile because the witness begins in the second mile. And he says further, he says, be not hasty to go out of his sight. There are many people who think they can opt out of this upcoming election because they've got their principles. Well, rain on your principles because your principles are misguided. He says that we do not, we not, we need to be not hasty to go out of the out of the arena that is before us. He says, do not be hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing. When he says that, it's like he's telling us that when the king and when we are those like Daniel who are called to stand in the court of the king, we need to not confront, we need to not provoke, we need to not. Uh, insult or dismiss or disrespect that king. And right now we have virtually a king in America. And we have to recognize that unless we do something, it will always be so from here on out. We cannot opt out of the situation. We cannot stand in an evil thing. Taking our stand, setting our jaw, and taking uh, on head on this whole thing as if we're more principled than somebody else is foolishness. Now, I know Ted Cruz went and spoke at that conference or that Republican National Conference, but I want you to know something. He should not have gone to that conference. He knew he would not tell, he would not endorse Trump. Trump knew he would not endorse him. And so it was really something that was a bad decision. When it says in verse 5 of chapter 8 in Ecclesiastes that the wise man, uh, his heart discerns both time and judgment, it was the time for him to not go. <laughs> Many of those other candidates did not go. And what ended up happening was the story all shifted to the Christian guy. Now, if your wife or my wife or if our children, our family members were vilified and insulted like uh, Ted Cruz's family was, then I want to suggest to you that you and I probably have done the same thing that he did. We would not be able to uh, endorse Trump overtly because he insulted your wife. <laughs> he insulted your wife. But also he would not be able to uh, get out of there without uh, doing the endorsement. You got to applaud his character. He wouldn't do it, but he shouldn't have gone. That was the problem. And for people like Hannity and those talk radio people who have no biblical moorings, none. They're just all about the politics. I want to tell you, what they're saying is foolishness and it's wrong. The thing they should be saying is, Cruz just shouldn't have gone. I get it. Let's move on. Nothing to see here. The second thing I want you to see, uh, or another thing I want you to see, is it says that the king will do whatever he wanted, wants to do. There's power in the words of the king. And we can't say to him, what doest thou? This society we live in, yes, it's been destroyed over the past several years. Our debt, uh, the borders are down, uh, religious freedom's on the run, marriage has been assaulted. We are in a war. It's a spiritual warfare. And because the church is not united in its truest sense, we're sitting, we're sitting here with the, with the repercussions of that. Let me illustrate. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 says that the head is sick and the heart is faint. If we could say that the political machinery of our country would be the head because they have to make decisions for everyone day to day, I think we could also equally say that the church is the heart, just like our conscience uh, speaks to our head and we don't do certain things. The heart is faint. The church is faint. And it's not just faint for being worn out. It's faint for lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, lack of nutrition. They, the church itself doesn't even know what right and wrong is today. And may I say to you, I'm not speaking of Christendom. I'm talking about the church, the church of Jesus Christ, the true bride. Christendom is inundated with all kinds of false religion that calls itself Christianity. Those of us who know Christ know that there is a way unto salvation that seems right unto a man, but at the end thereof are the ways of death. No, the true bride of Christ 
has its values and its conscience and its principles all in order and it knows how to navigate and to discern time and judgment. Daniel discerned time and judgment. He appealed uh, to, the, to the chamberlain to let him not eat the king's meat and defile himself. He appealed and he was blessed of God for having done it. He didn't say, I'll not do it. He appealed. You and I can now cast a vote for Donald Trump. I hold my nose. I know. I get it. But it's either, if it's either him or Hillary, we're going to choose Trump. Because Trump at least has, as Michelle Bachman has pointed out, 1950s values. His ignorance of spiritual things may serve him rather than hinder him because he has been, told, has been called uh, teachable, educable by Michelle Bachman. She's talked with him and she's on the Intelligence Commitment uh, Committee. And you should Google some of her stuff on what she has said about Donald Trump. I don't know if the man's been saved. Uh, there are people who are saying it. I want to just go on the record and say, I, I'm not buying it. I don't see any evidence of his salvation whatsoever. And uh, what I want to suggest further is that uh, the person who said that he was saved uh, was referencing a health and wealth prosperity preacher who is a female who just simply is painting everything rosy and pretty. It's just not a good foundation upon which to say the man was converted. But he is educable, she said, and hopefully looking down the barrel of a gun, uh, of the gun, of international crises that are all around us, maybe, just maybe, he'll be a Nebuchadnezzar. Come to Christ, realizing his insufficiency for these things. Now, with that said, I want to just um, point you to another passage. Not only are we supposed to not go quickly from the king's presence, but it is in 1 Timothy chapter 2 that the Bible says that I exhort therefore first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks, uh, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for those that are in authority. Here it is, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable. The word acceptable means useful. This is good and acceptable in the sight of our God who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom, listen, for all to be testified in due time. Why does God want us to have peace? So that we might live quiet, peaceable lives and witness, 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 because God wants all to come to repentance and the knowledge of the truth. Guys, listen. I'm speaking fast because I know you don't always have the time to listen to long, drawn-out things. But I want you to know that from God's heart, He is working all in the machinery of all things. Nothing is random about God. There is a purpose in everything. God raises up one and puts down another. The church has been faint because of lack of nutrition. The people of God are not witnessing. We are not a conscience to the head, which is the government. We like to point at the politicians because it's easier to be a Republican or a conservative than it is to be a Christian. We need to step up, step out, go out there, do our duty, hold our nose sometimes, and I know that's the watchword of the day, but listen, this guy's not a Mormon. He's not an Adventist. He's not somebody who is not Christian in the sense of trying to be something that is antithetical to Christianity. He is a man who is a worldling. He is like the kid on the high school playground who has got the cool car and all the girls. I mean, he's got the pageants and all that, and he's got these models, and he trades one in and gets another. He's just doing what worldlings do. But what he is doing is he's seeing things from a very pragmatic position. And I think that we're going to need at least, at least that at this time. Hoping that he'll come to Christ. Thankful that Pence is his choice for his, his vice president. For there will be some salty influences in his life. We need to do our duty. And our duty is to be boots on the ground for God, which means we're salt and light, and we need to go out there and tell the world, Jesus saves. But we can't do that if we're constantly on the run, looking over our shoulders, fighting a Muslim incursion, dealing with an economy whereby people are completely without 
uh, and destitute and incapable of making sense because of the welfare society, it will not be like the 1930s and 40s when we had the Great Depression. Why? Because people's hearts are waxed cold. And because when things go sideways, they're going to want what's yours. They're going to want to take what's yours. They're not going to ask to paint your fence and sleep in the barn for a meal. They're going to come in with vitriol and with uh, self-assuredness that they're in the right. When we read in Revelation about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, we recognize we're right on the cusp of such things. Anarchy. Murder. Uh, the ability for uh, their form uh, flowing out poverty and all kinds of things. This is where we are. And the only thing that can knock it back on its heels is if God chooses to show up. He is not watching the secularist. He is not watching the atheist. He is watching the Christian. Do not go out of the presence of the king. Do not stand in an evil thing. Come across the line, pull the lever for the person who will do the least damage and hopefully some true good from pragmatic standpoint, and then we will deal with the next thing next because those Supreme Court justices are in the balance, the, the economy's in the balance, uh, our peace and our welfare in the day-to-day -day, uh, and contentment and prosperity of the day-to-day -day is in, 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 in the balance because of the incursion of immigrations, uh, immigrants. We are in big, big trouble because we have forgotten God. The head is sick and the heart is faint. If you're a child of God today, you're part of God's heart. And we need to recognize what His Word says. So I've given you a couple of passages. Isaiah 1, verses 5 and following. Ecclesiastes 8. And we also have for, before us uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Guys, listen. God wants us to do what we can to preserve the peace. We are the ones who are He's watching. He would have us get on our faces, repent of our sin, repent of our affluent mentality and our egocentricity, and come to Him. He has assured us in His Word, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I believe the Lord's coming, but I believe that if He's going to postpone it, it's going to be for the sake of those who are out there on the, on the same page as He is, working to see people come to Christ. That's the whole mission. The church has lost it. We're not influence. We're not salt. We're not light. And we're cooperating with a whole lot of nonsense. Let's dive into our Bibles, find the Lord's heart, and let's go out there and do the best we can with what we have to work with. And may God take a sling and a stone and bring down a giant that we all are standing in the shadow of. Well, God bless you. I don't, my first pick was not Donald Trump, but I would suggest to you he's the best pick that we have to work with now. God bless you, and I would just say it, not in any tray way. I'm like Jonah, I want to run the other way, but I'm not going to do it because God has called me to Nineveh. And I will say it with all my heart, God bless America. Thanks for listening.